Greetings in the name of Jesus Christ. How's it going, guys? Man, that glare is bad. So, uh, it's been a little while since I put up a video. I've been in the Word. I've been in prayer. I've been doing some fasting, too. Um, I've been getting a lot of revelation. A whole lot of it. Um, the last topic I'll talk about in this video is the main one I've gotten some serious revelation on. And it just keeps getting expounded. <clears throat> um... First thing I want to uh, throw out there, uh, the prayer and fasting, and I keep harping on that, even in comments on other people's videos, I harp on prayer and fasting, and it's important, the especially the fasting, because it gives you a lot of clarity, and I've received a lot of clarity at lately as far as the word goes, as far as things that I do, um, a lot of peace, a lot of understanding, a lot of patience, because when you deny the body what it, what it lusts after, then the spirit becomes stronger and the spirit s steps out and, and does more of the thinking and the controlling. Um, so it really is important to fast if you're able to do that. Not a lot of people are able to do like a three, five, or seven day fast. I'm on a seven now. I've already done a three and a five. Um, some people, that their blood sugar gets up and down. So they might be able to do maybe a one day fast. And that's 24 hour fasts are great. Uh, a lot of people use that with prayer for, say, the upcoming abortion law that's been put, being put out. Uh, I shaved my head for it because, in protest of it, because I did it for cancer when I'm, uh, people I know had cancer, and I'm going to do it now for this uh, because not a lot of people are standing up against this thing. They're not fighting it like they're supposed to. Uh, some are, but not a lot. But anyway, there's different things that you can do. You can do a 24-hour fast against this law. The Lord will honor that. So let's get to the meat and potatoes. Um, the new abortion law. Uh, more and more people are starting to speak up. Uh, more people are starting to be very open about it. Um, it's kind of funny because it seemed like just me and a few other people maybe were the first ones to hear about this thing coming out and started saying something. Well, now a bunch of people are starting to say something. Um, 27 states, the last I heard, 27 states have submitted this same legislation to get this passed. And Virginia's was cast down by a five to three vote. The governor of Virginia spoke for it. So I foresee them end up ending up passing this law. Uh, hopefully people in Virginia will stand up against it. The um, uh, Louisiana just had an issue with it where a, Supreme, a Republican Supreme Court justice sided for the law. So we're starting to see the spirit of the Antichrist is starting to get into the people's hearts that we thought were the good guys. Pray for your government. Pray for your public officials. You pray that the Lord will keep them on the path because they're out there trying to protect us, but they can be persuaded and they can be led away also. So keep them in your prayers. Uh, I, I pray for our government every night because they're all being beat up. I mean, look at Trump. A lot of people don't like Trump, but the thing is, look at what he's going through up there. Look at what that guy took on. And he did not have to, in any way, shape, or form, had any responsibility to take that on. And he did it. And look what he's doing. He's changing the world. He's changing things. We have better relations with other countries now than we've ever had. Even though you hear about all the threats, which we'll talk about that in a second, but all the threats around the world, the thing is, we're respected now. And those people don't mess with us. But um, the Bible foretells that changing. America's not part of the end times we're taken out of the situation. So it's pretty clear that at some point they're all going to say, to thumb their nose at us and just do whatever they want and we're not going to be relevant anymore. But that's in, that's during the tribulation. Anyway, <clears throat> this abortion law, if you haven't looked into it, I had a discussion with my daughter yesterday and she told me it's just, you know, if it's a health issue or if the mother's going to die or if the baby's going to die, and I had to correct her and say, no, it's not. She goes, Dad, I read the abortion law. I said, yeah, I did too. And it doesn't say that. The abortion law, the new abortion law, allows for the mother to actually have the baby. And they'll make the baby comfortable. And then they sit and discuss whether or not she can abort it. If she suddenly decides the day of birth she wants to abort the baby. When you get into it, you start reading what it is, and especially if you can get past the legalese, uh, it's very disturbing because they're basically talking about taking the baby and killing the baby. Now, I don't know what each individual state's going to do, but so far, that's, I mean, wow, 
And if you've ever seen the process for an abortion, it's horrible. I've seen actual videos um, that doctors took, doctors that were getting out of the business because they had a conscience or developed a conscience or even became a Christian, and they would take their cell phone and they would take videos um, of afterwards and the body parts. They have to dismember the fetus to get it out of the mother. And then they would, you know, those guys have since gone underground. They don't talk to people anymore. They probably have their lives threatened because of it. Because abortion is a big business. Huge business. They make millions of dollars on that stuff. And that's not counting the other things that go on with it. And I'm not going to get into that. You can do your own research or find out about that. Because it's disturbing. Don't go to China. They have a heavy price to pay for what they've been doing concerning that. So, stand up against this. If you are a Christian, if you are a mother, stand up against this abortion law. E at the very least, email your governor in your state and email you t at least two of your main state representatives and tell them you do not want this passed. You, it, it, at all costs, this has to be halted. Now, whether it does any good or not, it doesn't matter. The fact is, is that we as a church need to stand up against these things. We have given up our voice over the years. We have gotten complacent and comfortable. And we don't go out there and and get our, get involved like we used to. And a, and a lot of it started when the 501c3 thing came out. Whenever they started offering the tax, uh, the tax status exemption, 501c3 to churches, then suddenly churches had to start keeping their mouth shut. And they had to quit saying things about, speaking out about these things. And that's unfortunate because now the church is going to be to blame for letting allowing a lot of these things to happen. Because back before that, the church was involved in government. The church had a say so in it. And right now in our presidency, the church is involved. But the we've given up a lot of that to let other people take, take control and deal with things. And we got complacent. We got comfortable. And now it's coming back to bite us. And speak out. In any way you can, speak out against this. And if you get beat up for it, hey, you know what? It is what it is. That's a blessing if you get beat up for the name of the Lord. Stand up for this. In the name of Jesus Christ, stand up for this. Tell people you are against this. Because it's wholesale murder of children. Plain and simple. That's what it is. You're not just, oh, well, there's a health issue. So, you know, in the, in the, in the uh, interest of a mother's life, will abort the fetus. It's not that. They're talking about actually having her pass. If it's on the day of delivery, having her pass this baby, living, breathing, perfectly normal child, and, and if they say, okay, well, you can have the abortion, they're going to kill that baby. Go look it up, do your own research, find out for yourself. <coughs> Threats from other countries have escalated a hundredfold. Um, rockets uh, just the other day were fired by Hamas into Israel. Then we find out that Hamas is in league with Russia, and Russia gave them control over a bunch of their missile platforms. This is Hamas. This is a terrorist organization. I was in Iraq in 2010, and we fought Hamas and Hezbollah. So this is being allowed by other countries that are trying to get at Israel. Because it keeps the, you know keeps them busy dealing with that while they go and they move their stuff down there. I mean, there there's almost five. I think there's five countries now that are surrounding the whole northern portion, all the way around Golan and the northern portion of Israel, um, with troops and armament. Um, it's pretty serious. Um, Venezuela, uh, we're actually talking about going down there and overthrowing. That guy down there in Venezuela. Problem is, Russia and China are both backing him up. He gave Russia 20 tons of gold. And he is allowing them, for protection, he's allowing them to mine gold in Venezuela. And they're going to back him up militarily and, and protect him. China's doing the same thing. This is going to this is gonna get bad. This is going to blow up. Just watch. I mean, we're, we're, we're literally doing the things that are going to bring destruction upon ourselves and I gotta say it honestly as a country we deserve it because of what we've allowed to happen in our country and outside of our country um, so right now you know there's there's a lot of I guess you'd say Cold War-esque uh, situations going on uh, with these other countries where one is waiting for the to see what the other one's gonna do 
Uh, here last week, China fired their railgun that they have. Theirs is bigger than the one we have by a lot. Um, and it can fire a nuclear tipped projectile 148 miles. Uh, quick. It gets there like 90 seconds. Um, it's amazing how fast this thing is. By the time you know it happened, it's too late. It's already impacted. So they don't have to get very close in order to fire these things. Uh, Russia flew two of their bombers, in, or no, one of their bombers into our airspace. Way into our airspace over America. And then turned around and was escorted back out. Um, a ton more people are approaching the border, trying to overrun the border before the wall's being put up. This country, and we've allowed this, this country is being overthrown very slowly from within and without. And do not be surprised if you see suddenly war comes upon us and suddenly we start getting hit, whether it's by natural disasters or whether it's by rocket attacks or whether it's, you know, any kind of military situation. Because a lot of countries now are gunning for us because they know they need to get us out of the picture in order to go after Israel. They can do little attacks at Israel, but if they do a full frontal attack, they, now, don't get me wrong, they can't beat Israel right, right now. Israel is going to be protected by, by God. But they know that we will come and we will get involved. And if we send everything we got and get involved with them, there's going to be a problem. They need to take us out first. And it could happen real quick. With the stage being set the way it is, things could go south very fast. Literally within a couple of hours, things could change. I mean, it's doing that already anyway around the world. <coughs> Um, March 19th, and there's a lot of talk about the, the blood moon that happened in January, and a lot of people say there's three blood moons this month, well there's not. Um, March 19th and, I'm sorry, February 19th, not March, uh, February 19th and March 21st, I think, um, where we have two super moons. Now the one on February 19th is fairly significant, now don't. Before I say anything else, not date setting, don't quote me on that kind of stuff that I set a date. I am not setting a date. What I'm doing is I'm pointing at specific things, signs that the Lord said to watch for that are coming up, that are getting ready to happen for us to be aware of. Uh, I'm not pointing at a date because I don't know what day, what day the rapture is going to happen or when he's coming. But on February 19th, that moon is called a super snow moon. If you read in the Bible, it talks about snow and what treasures are hidden within the snow. And the last time we had a moon similar to this one was in 2016 in November. The time before that that we had a moon this big and at this level was in 1948. 1948 is when Israel became a nation again. So it's kind of significant that that happened. Also, Purim, the holiday of Purim for the for the Jews is on the 20th and 21st. This moon carries all the way through Purim. And you can go look up and see what Purim means or, or what, what it is as a, as a holiday. And it'll kind of surprise you, actually. Of, uh, you know, how, it, how it's significant with this. And how it, um, the, the moon and, and the holiday, how they tie to each other. Uh, and then if you go and you look at what the rabbi said, that our Antichrist, or our, I'm sorry, our Messiah, slip of the tongue, but it's the truth, our Messiah will be presented or will present himself around Purim, between Purim and the elections in April. So we're seeing a time frame here where something could happen. We're seeing a, a high watch time, uh, to put it in another term to keep our eyes open and to talk to people and to tell people, look guys, we're, we're, we're coming down to the wire. We're seeing significant signs that are telling us date-wise, astrological-wise, and events in the world-wise that are pointing us to a specific couple of months where things look like they could change drastically. Um, I tell everybody, start paying attention, start watching, um, be ready, prepare yourself because things are about to change heavily. We're about to see some very astonishing, incredible things in this world. So, February 19th is, is a super snow moon. And also, the, the holiday of Purim is on the 20th and 21st. This moon carries all the way through to the 21st. Uh, as a side note to that, you'll, you'll, you'll also see 
Regulus, and you can go look up, uh, look up that one. I think it's in Leo or Virgo, but you can look up Regulus, and Regulus is going to be right next to that moon during while it's passing through the sky. Um, should be very bright, actually, is what they're saying. And that's significant, too, because of the constellation that it's in, because there's a lot of ties to the constellations uh, when it comes to the moons and comes to things that are going on. But you can do your own research on that and see what you think. <clears throat> I don't pay too much attention to it. I just pay attention to what's going on, and I pay attention in here and listen to what the Lord says. Anyway, the Antichrist. Um, we're going to get into some scripture after this that has to do with abortion. Um, I just want to throw that out uh, because the Bible speaks very clearly about it. But the Antichrist, um, still a lot of people, in fact, a lot more people are leaning towards Obama and looking at Macron, the president of France. While both are very good candidates, I have seen things here in the last couple of days that really lead me to believe it's Jared Kushner. If it's not Jared Kushner, he knows who it is, and it's somebody that he's helping bring in onto the scene. But I think it very high probability it's him. Um... Jared Kushner and his family have been uh, Chabad donors for a long time, friends of the Chabad. And that's an Israeli outreach, outreach, uh, where they work to bring Jews back to Jerusalem, get them set up in there. They're working on building the temple and getting that going, which that's about to kick off if you guys are paying attention here. Um... I've seen some videos where the rabbis are talking to other people that are involved in different governments, telling them, bring the Messiah forward. They already know who it is. Bring the Messiah forward, bring the Messiah forward. It's all about timing at this point. Um, the Kushner family have been friends of the Israelis and the Jewish government for a long time. Netanyahu is, is uh, you know, there, there's videos of him doing speeches talking about the Kushners and how they've known, known them for a long, long time. Um, and Kushner kind of fits the profile. His family name is from the original Roman Empire. Um, he's like 6'2", 6'3", 6'4", tall dude. Uh, the pleasant looking, you know. And a lot of people say, you know, that the Torah says he'll, he will be born from the tribe of Dan. And what I'd like to point out is that when the is Israelis were kicked out of uh, Jerusalem in, I think, 579 A.D., where did they go? They went north, and they went up into Europe and spread out over Europe. Uh, funny enough, I actually found out I'm uh, my family name is related to a Jewish surname. Because um, in the looking up of this information, I, f I found that out. I didn't even know. So, And my family name is from Poland. Well, that's also part of the original Roman Empire. And a lot of Jews went up there. Now, if you do any, hi any history uh, looking up uh, the 12 tribes of Israel... Only two tribes are known to exist today. Uh, the other ten tribes are missing. Well, that's because they filtered up into the northern countries and integrated and were bred out, basically. But the descendants are all still here. And I found out I'm, I'm related to one of them in some way. So, Kushner has a close, close tie to this situation. Um, he's, he's the one, not Trump, he's the one that drew up the peace deal. He's the one who's doing all the legwork. He's the one talking to everybody. And if you dig really deep into Kushner and, and what he's done and his accomplishments, this guy, extremely smart, and he has been uh, instrumental in getting Trump elected, uh, getting his campaigns going, all kinds of stuff. I mean, this guy really does a lot of work, and but he stayed, stayed behind the scenes. And this situation is just like what Satan would do if he would send Obama out there, send Macron out there, and while y'all are looking at him, I'm going to have my guy that I pick doing this stuff right here. And Satan's smart. He's going to have a couple of people he could use. So I'm not saying Kushner is. I'm saying that I believe there's a high probability he is. Um, the the rabbis and, and people in Israel, uh, they even refer to him as the uh, reincarnated John the Baptist. So the mindset is there. Uh, I think we're going to see him step up here in the next two and a half months, maybe even less. Um, but do your own research and see what you think, because hardly anybody's talking about this. I found one video talking about is Jared Kushner the Antichrist. Nobody's looking at it. 
And so I'm doing do my own video mentioning it, and I've done a couple others where I've mentioned it. But that's what that's just what I see. That's what I think. This is a revelation that's given to me. And it was just like that. I was like, wait, wait a minute. Macron hasn't got nothing to do with any of this stuff. And they wouldn't accept Macron as their messiah because he doesn't fit any of the profiles. Kushner, on the other hand, is an Orthodox Jew. And who would they accept more readily than an Orthodox Jew? Already established, already been working with him, already friends. They love him. Everybody that knows the Kushner name, they, they are, oh yeah, we remember the Kushners there. We love them everywhere, everywhere they, 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 they appear. So do your research on that, see what you think, because that's who I'm watching. And it very easily could become him. We'll find out. We're going to find out here real fast. All right, so those, those were the quick ones I got. Um, the main thing was going to be the abortion thing, but I had to throw those other two in there real quick uh, for you guys to go look up. But I want to point out some scriptures real fast, if you stick with me just a minute here, um, that where the Bible talks about abortion and refers to uh, the, the, the children and how important they are and what a gift the children are. Um, Psalm 139, 13 through 16, For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to me. So that's talking about that's uh, whoever wrote that one uh, is talking about being formed and that before conception that God knew who that was and knew what he was going to do and was had already seen down the line what, how many days that person would live everything that they were going to accomplish all, all these things so that just that those passages right there in Psalms 139 show you that that life is there. There's life in, in that fetus before it's born. It's not just a random chunk of flesh and bone that's growing inside of a mother's womb. That's a living creature. That's a conscious creature. And if you're thinking about doing this, you, you need to reconsider. Let's do a couple of more. Jeremiah 1.5 Before I, This is God talking. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. But here again, God is right there creating this. To, to, to everybody else, it's just um, we copulated, we, had, we were creating a baby, the sperm met with the egg and fertilized it, and, and they don't look at it from the aspect of everything was created by God, and God is in there, and he's putting that child together. On, on his level of uh, and his the way it, way he, he does things, um, and you're killing that creation. Psalm one twenty seven three through five. Children are a heritage from the Lord, offspring a reward from Him. Like arrows in the hands of a warrior are children born in one's youth. Blessed is the man whose quiver is full of them. They will not be put to shame when they contend with their opponents in court. The children are a blessing. Um, you're blessed if you have a big family. Um, you know, it's hard to do nowadays because of the way things are, but people still have big, big families. You know, children are a huge blessing. Uh, Genesis 127. This is the very first book of the Bible. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God create is creating those fetuses, he's creating those little babies, and we're blatantly having them ripped out of the mother's bodies and throwing them away and doing other horrible things that I'm not going to mention in this video. You can go look up yourself. Psalms 8, 5-7 through seven. You have made them a little lower than the angels and crowned them with glory and honor. You made them rulers over the works of your hands. You put everything under their feet, all flocks and herds and the animals of the wild. God created us and gave us dominion over his creation that we should subdue it and control it and live in harmony with it. And... What do we do? We destroy everything. Mankind left unchecked destroys himself and destroys everything around him. John 31.15 Did not he who made me in the womb make them? Did not the same one form us both within our mothers? Now this is, or Sorry, it's Job 31.15 um, 
Job is talking about him and the other people. Basically, this is a reference to Jews and Gentiles. That God made all of us. God created all of us. We're, we're all in his image. Psalm 22.10 From birth I was cast on you. From my mother's womb you have been my God. Isaiah 49.15 Can a mother forget the baby at her breast and have no compassion on the child she has born? Though she may forget, I will not forget you. That could actually, you read that, it could actually be referring to that. Back in those days when this stuff was being written, um, people were offering up, and Jews were doing it too, were worshipping Baal. Baal is basically a synonym of Satan, and is a demon. And if you can, if you if you don't have a weak disposition, go look up the the ritual that they would perform when they offered those children up, because it offered it, it involved a fire and it involved a big, fairly shallow dished bowl made out of metal. And go look it up, and you find out for yourself how they did this because it's probably the most horrible way you could think for a, a baby to die and that's how and that's how they would sacrifice them because Baal said I will give you the whole world you sacrifice I'll, I'll just require your children's blood and people were having babies just just to, to throw them on this thing and it's ridiculous so I'm almost at 30 minutes so I'm gonna keep it there Guys, please, speak out about this abortion law. Stand up for it. And and be counted that you are against this 100%, and it cannot be allowed. The frustration comes from we know that most people won't listen. But we have to make our voices heard. Um, somehow, and pray on it. And somehow we have to be heard, at least try to be heard about, by this. Stand and be counted. Because if you sit on the sidelines or if you get involved with helping people do this kind of stuff, you're going to have to tell the Lord why you did that. This is his creation. And you're if you're helping to destroy it, stand up against it, guys. I'm telling you, call your people. Watch Jared Kushner. I think if you did some digging and you start paying more, a little attention to it, what is involved in what the rabbis are looking for as far as an Antichrist and what he's doing... You'll see that they align pretty close. I think better than any other candidate we've had. Um, and the super snow, snow moon. Uh, it's a pretty significant moon that's coming up here in the next uh, few weeks. Um, and like I said, I'm not date setting. I'm just saying we're in a very, very high watch time for things to happen. And that's events in the world and that's signs that we're seeing in the skies. So and just do your research. Watch. Keep an eye out for these things. I love you guys fiercely. I cannot wait to meet y'all in uh, the sky. Um, I, I pray every night that I'm counted worthy to be taken up. Because I know I'm not perfect. But I believe and I have faith. And if you can at least have that, you're in pretty good shape. Everything you do after that, outside of faith, all your works, are what magnify your reward in heaven. Don't wait. If you're wrestling with this decision today, if you've been wrestling with this decision, don't wait. Look in my description. There's a simple, easy prayer down there. Say that prayer and receive salvation so you, can, so you won't have to be here for what's about to come upon this earth. Because it will be seven years, uh, basically this, the seven years tribulation will be the culmination of all the destruction that's ever befallen this earth in a seven year time frame. And it's going to happen fast, it's going to be terrible, and the end result will be, as much as if you deny, the end result will be when you see him coming in the clouds with great power and glory, everyone, everyone will then know we were wrong. And they'll still fight against him, they still won't turn, turn back to God. The Bible says it, go read it in Revelations, the Bible says it clearly. Um... Terrible times we're dealing with. Uh, terrible things that are going on in our world. And what even hurts even more, and a lot of a lot of my brethren will, will agree with me on this, is that it's hard to reach people. It's hard to get people to listen, even those within the church, because they don't want to give up what they have. They're tied to this world. 
Guys, there is nothing this world holds for you that even comes close to holding a candle to what God has created and what he has to show us. And it's... You have to make your own decision on this, but I beg you, don't go... Work, listen, let me put it plain and simple. We will all live forever. We will all have eternal life. Every one of us. Good, evil, doesn't matter who it is, even Satan. The thing is, our decisions decide where we spend that eternal life. And there's only two places to spend it. In heaven, in paradise, and with a loving God and a loving Lord that will take care of us and will show us incredible things. Or in a dark place where there is no God, where he doesn't have his hand on you protecting you like he does here. And utter torture and destruction forever. It will never end. You'll never be able to escape it. There is no getting out of it. Once that, once it's done, it's done. Don't take the chance. Don't wait and say, well, well, I'll just tell God when I see him. I ask people that a lot. They start coming off with all kinds of uh, goofy stuff uh, as, it, as it pertains to God and pertains to religion and, and uh, what the belief systems and all that. And I always tell them, are you going to tell that to God when you see him on Judgment Day? The two most powerful religions in the world, Christianity and Islam, both say the same thing. Everyone will be judged. And are you going to stand there and try to make that argument and make that case in front of in front of God? The one you denied all this time? No one rules in hell. There are demons that rule, rule over hell. That's their dwelling place. Human beings do not rule in hell. No matter what you do, no matter how much evil you perform, you will not have a place to rule in hell. Because the Bible says that after the millennial reign, even Satan will be tormented. And he's the king. So, what does that tell you? You will not have a place of power down there. And once you're there and you realize suddenly you made a mistake, there's no getting away from it. So, don't take that chance. If you're on the fence, make that decision. Come, come join the team. Read the last chapter of the Bible. We win. Come join the winning team and be in paradise and not deal with that stuff. You don't have to change your life. You know, my, my daughter told me that, um, well, I don't want to have to be an a-hole in order to uh, live in that belief system. And I said, it has nothing to do with being an a-hole. I told her, you don't have to change your life. All you have to do is come to him, ask for that, and just watch. He will change your life. He will show you. He will convict your heart. And he will le show you where the path is. Then you have to make the decision. Do I want to keep on this path and follow this? Or do I want to turn away and I don't like this? Because the gift of salvation is free to everybody. You know, I get um, comments uh, a, lo a lot of times and messages. I used to get them on social media. I don't have that anymore from uh, homosexuals. And I would tell them, they would always come on to me. Oh, you're, you Christians hate this, you hate that. And I was like, well, who hates who? I don't hate anybody. I don't hate you guys. I love you guys. You're my fellow human being. I have tons of homosexual friends. But what I do tell them is I tell them, I said, what you guys are living under, you're living under the sin of adultery. And I told them that that's something you have to conquer. And you're going against the natural order of things, the natural law. And the natural law is male and female. You doing that will consistently keep making your life miserable. And it will consistently go downhill. Now, you'll talk to a lot of them that got a lot of money and they're famous. RuPaul's a good example. They'll tell you, oh, my life is great. I don't have anything. But go watch RuPaul. And watch how RuPaul interacts with other people. RuPaul is miserable. RuPaul has a miserable life. RuPaul is not happy. And most of them will tell you that they do not lead a very happy existence. There's a couple. But most of them will tell you that if they, if they really get honest about deep down how they feel... It's an unfulfilled life. And that's because they don't have God. Anybody who leads an unfulfilled life does not have God in their life. I want for nothing. I need for nothing. I just feel tickled to death for everything I have. Most people look at me and say, I'm trailer trash. Because I live in a single wide trailer. I have, I, I literally have everything I need. Everything I could want. I don't need anything. I own my own property. I'm just about to be out of, completely out of debt. I don't want for nothing. 
except for scammers to quit calling me. Anyway, I'm going to get off here, and uh, I really hope that if you're struggling with this decision that you will consider, um, consider it intently so you can get out, escape whatever's going, yeah, that's another thing too, a lot of people call are calling us, uh, those of us that read the scriptures, and we can see that it's a pre-trib rapture, there's two different raptures that are going to happen, you can go into, I think it's Ezekiel and, and, Thess and Thessalonians and Corinthians, and you can read where it describes a totally different event than what the Revelation describes, which is going to happen right when Jesus returns, right before the final destruction, there will be, a, the tribulation saints will be taken up, and a lot of people are saying we're escapists. And I tell them, yeah, you're absolutely right, I'm an escapist. I don't want to be here when God pours his wrath out on this planet. I'm scared of God. I'm scared of Jesus, too, when he's angry. And he's coming back and he's mad because we're killing all these kids and we're doing all these stupid things and we're denying him. And we use God and Jesus' name as cuss words. So, absolutely, I'm an escapist. I don't want to be here for that. Now, if he counts me worthy to stay here and suffer and lead people to Christ, that's different. But I don't want to be here for this. You are 100% right. I am an escapist. I want to escape tribulation. Because I know what's coming. I know what's going to happen. I have a very unique ability that God gave me called insight. I've had it since I was a kid. I can look inward or I can step out and look back at myself. I can also look at situations and see different avenues of, of where they could go and what could happen and who all could be involved in those things. And I can culminate and, and see where the possible issues are going to be and avoid those things. I've avoided a lot of problems in my life because of this ability. I know what's coming on this earth. I know what's going to happen. It's going to be bad. You are going to see things that you will wish you had never, never seen. But that's why people during the tribulation are going to come to a saving knowledge of Christ. And those are going to be taken up at the end. You are 100% right. I am an escapist. I don't want to be here for this. I don't want to be here and see all that suffering and pain. So, absolutely. Call me an escapist. I'll take it. So, be in prayer. Be in fasting. If you can all at all do it. You know, and, and you go, go to the Lord and repent every day and tell Him you're sorry for the things you did. Acknowledge the mistakes that you made. Because it shows you approved in his eyes. Because you are willing to admit that you are messing up and you've made mistakes and willing to say you're sorry. It's pretty simple, guys. Get in the Word. It tells you everything. And it's very, very basic and very simple. Like I said in another video, keep it simple, stupid. Don't overcomplicate it. I love you guys, and I cannot wait to meet y'all and see y'all in the clouds.